Hey there guys, welcome to this video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and uh, we are going to be doing this GMAT question now. So this question over here says that is value of absolute x is less than 1, right? So I'm going to be doing this question together with you. You know, I haven't solved it before. So, uh, so here the question basically is asking you is absolute value of x less than 1 and whenever you see that uh, don't just don't just stop there you know don't don't move on to statements right away kind of uh, take a moment to kind of simplify this and and this is something that we've gone through in the videos and there you would see that I have uh, shown you that whenever you see something like this you kind of break it down to is x uh, less than 1 but greater than negative 1 right so this is what the question is asking you right so that's what it is so the first statement here says uh, absolute x plus 1 is equal to 2 times absolute x minus 1 now that will give us so many possibilities basically it will give us four possibilities right uh, it could be that x plus 1 can be outrightly equal to 2x minus 1 right in that case you'll have x plus 1 to be equal to 2x minus 2 uh, and in that case you'll have 3 to be equal to x right so that's that's one possibility let's look at other possibilities now uh, the other one is where negative of x plus 1 when you know whenever something comes out of an absolute value it could either be positive or it could either be negative right so it's negative x plus 1 uh, so x plus 1 could be a negative number that's what I'm saying right so x plus 1 could be a negative number uh, and in that case uh, negative would come out of it and similarly let's say x minus 1 is also a negative number right so uh, that would be 2 times uh, negative x minus 1 right so you have negative x negative 1 you got to be really careful with your scratch paperwork and uh, which is this is basically nothing but uh, x minus 1 negative is 1 minus x right so you have 2 minus 2x right so what do you get here uh, again over here you get x to be equal to 3 I'm just gonna make sure I did everything correct negative x and negative 1 and then 2 times uh, 1 minus x so 2 uh, 2 minus 2x this 2x goes there uh, 2x minus x again I get x to be equal to 3 right so I, I get that every time uh, now what's the other possibility right so there could be a possibility where x minus 1 could become a negative number and x plus 1 could stay a positive number you know that's a possibility so let's make that so let's keep x plus 1 to be a positive number but let's make x minus 1 to be a negative number so this is what it becomes you know see so x minus 1 becomes 1 minus x but this stays intact right it's, it's possible for numbers between 0 and 1 so x plus 1 could be equal to 2 minus 2x and then again we have the same thing as this 3x is equal to uh, 3x is equal to 1 and then we have here x to be equal to 1 by 3 now if you look at the nature of these numbers uh, is x between negative 1 and 1 this one gives you no and right and this one gives you a yes it's a yes no data sufficiency question if you get a yes and if you get a no that means the statement is insufficient right let's see the second statement second statement is simple it says x minus 3 absolute is not equal to 0 right this basically just says that x minus 3 uh, is not equal to 0 and negative of x minus 3 is not equal to 0 right so whenever you break the absolute you kind of get two different possibilities so this basically says that neg uh, x is not equal to negative x is not equal to 3 and this also again says that x is not equal to 3 well, does that tell me that it's x between negative 1 and 1? No, right? Because uh, it could be between negative 1 and 1, and it could be not be between negative 1 and 1, because the only information we have is that x is not equal to 3. So this itself is not sufficient. But if we combine both the statements, we are able to rule these two things out, right? Because if x is not equal to 3, and now what is the other possibility that we are left with so whenever there are two absolute values there are always four possibilities right so whenever I say absolute of a is equal to absolute of B there are just four possibilities that a could be B a could be negative B 
negative A could be B or uh, negative A could be negative B. Yeah? These are the four possibilities. Now, if we try the other possibility, I'm pretty sure uh, we will get 1 by 3. So let's just go ahead and try that for the sake of it. So x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 1. So it could be that negative of x plus 1 uh, is equal to uh, 2 times 1 minus x. Right, so I'm kind of equating, no, sorry, that's not what I wanted to try. It was, uh, we have tried this as positive, this as positive. Uh, we, have, we have to try this as negative and this as positive. So negative of x plus 1 should be equal to 2 times uh, x minus 1. Now if we try that, that's negative x and negative 1, which is equal to 2x minus 2. Right? And then we get uh, 2 minus 1, that is equal to 1, that's equal to 3x. And again, we get x to be equal to 1 by 3. So uh, either from first statement, we get either x is 3 or x is 1 by 3. But the second statement tells us that x is not equal to 3. So the only thing that we can deduce from here is that x is equal to 1 by 3, which means both the statements are sufficient. Answer option C is my answer. So. In here, uh, what's important? What is the takeaway? The takeaway is, and again, I haven't, I haven't done s something which is extraordinarily intelligent here. You know, I've just mechanistically followed uh, what the question asked me. So whenever you have something like is x absolute of x less than a, then you can just say is is x is less than a or greater than negative a, right? So that's what you have to do. And whenever you get something like is absolute of a is equal to absolute of b, this is what you deduce out of it, right? And uh, and that's what it is, right? Uh, and if you get absolute of a to be equal to a constant, then a could be either the constant or a could be either negative of the constant, right? So these are the possibilities. So absolutes are always about possibilities and you have to make sure that you think about all the possibilities uh, before getting to the question. And then spend your one minute, one and a half minute, two minutes on the question and make sure that you nail it down uh, rather than, you know, trying to be quick and then getting the question wrong. Uh, so, so you have to follow that path. So I hope you understood this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you in the next one.